Hello and welcome to the Waters and Stenton video channel. My name is Peter Waters, G3OJV. And a uh, slightly different introduction. I'm currently on a train from Euston to Glasgow where I'm going to spend uh, a week, not actually in Glasgow, I'm going to take another train up to Fort William. And during that time I should be uh, uh, out portable with the radio. But I recently did a video about using mobile antennas for portable work. I had a lot of um, feedback on that, um, particularly uh, as regards radials and matching and so forth, because that's quite an important part. So what I intend to do now is to, well not now, <laughs> what I tend to do once I arrive uh, up in the West Highlands of Scotland, is to cover that topic uh, in a bit more detail and hopefully that uh, it will answer a number of questions that have been raised. Well I've arrived in uh, sunny Fort William. <laughs> well it's not actually sunny but uh, it's not raining and it's not snowing. There's a bit of snow on the tops and I'll swing the camera around just to uh, show you. So let's go inside and uh, have a chat about uh, radials and uh, feeding portable antennas. In the previous video I covered uh, the use of mobile whips uh, as portable antennas but uh, clearly uh, from the correspondence I've got there's a lot of questions about uh, how you actually feed them and radials and so forth and I thought it would be appropriate to actually answer all those questions in the form of a video rather than individually. You know the most important radial is the first radial that you lay down on the ground or that you install and I think for portable work uh, it's quite common just to use a single radial and it works quite well. Basically the radial forms part of the antenna system anyway. Now if we simplify it, um, if you imagine that the vertical antenna is half of a dipole, imagine that the vertical antenna is half a dipole and the other half is the radial. That's a good way of picturing it because it shows the importance of the of the radial. The radiation pattern is not the same, but the principle is there. So you do need a radial anyway to make up the other half of the antenna. You could, of course, just drive a copper rod into the ground. It's not a very efficient way of doing it. It doesn't work wonderfully well, but it does work. But again, you're not likely to want to do that if you're operating portable. So we'll take the first scenario that you lay a radial on the ground now that radial needs to be a quarter wave long. The problem is that when you lay a quarter wave length of wire on the ground, its resonant drops. So you need to make that radial around about 10 or 15% 15 shorter than what you would expect it to be because as I say, when it's on the ground, uh, the, the resonant frequency drops. It's difficult to be precise, um, and it's best that you actually experiment, uh, say, in the garden and get the length right. But it is quite important because the length of that radio will very much depend on the results you get, and particularly the VSWR. That radio needs to be resonant on the frequency, and certainly within the band that you're going to operate on. So a bit of preparatory work in the winter before you go out to... Uh, uh, portable in the spring and the summer is to find out what length that radial needs to be and as I say it's usually about 10 or 15 percent shorter because the, the frequency of that radial drops when it's laid on the ground. Now you can lay more than one radial on the ground you could take several radials with you. My experience is that uh, the more radials you lay on the ground the less uh, frequency dependent the antenna is on the length of those those radials. So uh, if you want to take sort of four or five radials and lay them on the ground, then you'll probably find that the antenna system is really not so sensitive to the length of those radials. But certainly if you're going to use one radial, then it has to be uh, almost spot on. Another option, of course, is to raise the radial above the ground. And you might do this if, perhaps if you're mounting your portable antenna, say on a, on a camera tripod. Uh, and again, it, that works. that works well. Um, but then you will need to adjust the radial length and probably the radial length will have to be increased to more the sort of length you would expect it to be. 
And again, it's really a back garden experimental job to get that right. Uh, it's, it's, it doesn't take too long. And do remember that um, if you want to fine tune the, the radial, rather than cut it, just fold it back on itself and it'll give you some idea of what sort of final length you need. Now, I, I, I've mentioned that the antenna system is very much sensitive uh, to the length of that radial. But there is something that gets in the way. And again, this is something I've noticed time and time again when I've been, been out to operating portable. And that is that if you imagine your antenna system, you've got the vertical uh, whip uh, there on the ground, you've got your radial, which you've carefully measured out, and then you connect your feeder cable to it, your 50 ohm feeder cable to it. The system just sees that as another radial. And almost certainly the length of that coax cable won't be the correct length, it won't be, won't be a quarter wave length, it'll be something, well, it'll be anything, but it certainly won't be a, a quarter wave length. And so it immediately messes up the matching that you might be in, in, involved in. And in fact, it can cause a few frustrations because you could be messing about and you think, wait a minute, I thought I got it right, now it's all gone skew whiff again. The reason is that the antenna system just sees that coax cable as a random radial connected to it. And as you move around and as you change the uh, the position of the cable, so you'll find that your measurements are going up and down, your SWR is good one moment and then it's up and down the next. So we need to solve that problem. Now that problem is very closely linked with what we call common mode currents, where uh, antenna current runs down the outside of the coax. In this particular case, it's quite critical. And the way to resolve that is to insert a line isolator right at the base of the portable antenna. And the simplest way to make a line isolator is to wind the coax cable round a toroid um, core. Uh, you can, I mean, I've seen it advocated that you can use um, sort of air wound coax, but it, it really is not very successful because that um, coil that you make, air wound coil, tends to be resonant over a very narrow band of frequencies. Far better to uh, use a toroid core. Now, in the base of the unit that I've used and I've shown in the previous video, I've actually got a toroidal co core uh, inside the base. Um, I use uh, 43 mix material, which seems to work. Uh, for portable work, I use a mini coax cable because it's thin, easy to wind, and I'm never going to run more than about 25 or 30 watts, so mini coax is, is fine. And I put about 12 turns around the core, uh, and that's sufficient. Now, it's interesting what that does. What it means to say is that the ra radial, which is connected on the antenna side of that toroidal uh, core, is completely isolated from the coax sheathing. The coax sheathing no longer takes any part in the antenna other than normal coax cable feeding the, the uh, power to the, uh, to the antenna. You've now got a radial that is completely isolated from the coax cable. The coax cable can be any length you like, you can move it around, and all of a sudden you'll find that when you're trying to adjust the antenna, all the VSWR readings suddenly start to make sense. Uh, you don't get uh, sudden changes that you can't explain. So I would certainly advocate a toroidal core um, at the base of the antenna so that you avoid that problem. Well, there we are. I hope that's answered a few questions about the original video and how you can use mobile antennas for portable operation. The feed-in is, is quite important, of course, and uh, I hope uh, that's uh, answered the uh, points that have been raised. Here in Scotland, well, we've had sunshine, we've had snow, and uh, we've had uh, sleet as well, so it's a right mixed bag. <laughs> Um, I should apologise for some noise in the background because the entire video has been shot on an iPhone, which is the reason why I've got this earpiece here, because I'm using the uh, mouthpiece of the uh, headset. Anyway, 
I hope you've found that video interesting. Please remember to subscribe to this channel so that uh, you'll be alerted when other videos uh, are uploaded. Until then, as usual, enjoy your ham radio and uh, here's the next time. Bye for now.